Hello friends! Today's episode is about the temporal lobes and religion. A lot of people who have temporal lobe epilepsy are hyper-religious and this got researchers to thinking maybe the temporal lobes have something to do with religion and that is what we are going to talk about today. So hang on, here we go. Even though I am breaking this down into different systems in the brain, it is important that you understand that these systems do not work in isolation. They work together to make one whole. The temporal lobes have many structures. Of interest to us are the hippocampus and the amygdala of the limbic system. The hippocampus is important in factual memory, while the amygdala is crucial in emotional response and memory. Stimulation of these areas produces impressions of meaningfulness, depersonalization, contact with God, deja vu, and jamais vu. Ramachandran suggests that the temporal lobes are the God module. Experiments with a psychedelic drug called DMT gives us some clues about why so many people believe in God. DMT is similar to serotonin and is made naturally in our brains. Dr. Rich Strassman conducted a study of IV DMT using experienced psychedelic drug users. These subjects reported making contact with non-humans and how real it felt. These subjects knew the effects were drug-induced, but since DMT is made in the human brain, not everyone who has these experiences knows that. Psychological structures underlie religious belief. Because of this, certain things are universal to all religions, such as emotional and intent-related theory of mind for supernatural beings, religious-specific doctrine, and personal experience. A cognitive operator simply refers to a mechanism underlying wide categories of cognitive function. These include abstracting the general from the particular, perception of causality in external reality, perception of sequences in reality, ordering elements into causal chains. There are two ways of getting spiritual experiences, group ritual and personal contemplation. The two are similar in that they involve subjective experiences of awe, peace, or ecstasy, and degrees of unitary experiences. Experiences include decreased sense of boundaries between self and external world and a sense of oneness with others. Models suggest complex interactions between the prefrontal cortex, thalamus, parts of the parietal lobe, and limbic system. Most religious practices require sustained attention involving the prefrontal cortex. The hypothalamus, the true master gland, is connected to the limbic system. It also links the nervous system to the endocrine system. Stimulation of the amygdala results in stimulation of the hypothalamus, which in turn stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is tied to a sense of relaxation, reduction in heart rate, and respiratory rate. According to Boyer, people do not accept religious concepts 
because they suspend rationality. They suspend rationality because the religious doctrines resonate with them. A number of experiments suggest that children are predisposed to assume intent behind natural events leading psychologists to think that left to their own devices they might believe in a god. Hood suggests a cognitive schema he calls supersense defined by him as the tendency to infer hidden forces in the world. This supersense creates beliefs in the supernatural by itself while culture only shapes those beliefs. Akili and Newberg proposed a theory that states an overload in limbic structures such as the hypothalamus and amygdala is responsible for a religious experience. The limbic system is part of the temporal lobes. According to them, this overload blocks perceptual input and eventually leads to ASC. In an fMRI study comparing people personally praying, making wishes to Santa Claus, and reciting the Lord's Prayer, data found activation in the prefrontal cortex and temporal parietal junction, areas critical to theory of mind and employed specifically in human-human interaction. In other words, people think of God as a person, not a supernatural entity. Most religions have at least one supernatural agent. An essential element for this belief is theory of mind. TOM allows us to explain and predict mental states of others. Believers tend to extend this to God. Practices in which believers participate, like prayer, lead one to attribute spontaneous thoughts and mental imagery to God. Theory of mind plays a crucial role in this process. In yet another fMRI study that compared recitation prayer, wishing to Santa Claus, and spontaneous prayer, Researchers found that an area of the temporal lobe, the temporopolar region, is activated in spontaneous prayer. Interestingly enough, this is also one area involved in theory of mind and social cognition. Emulation of the hippocampus and amygdala results in deja vu, visual hallucinations, and feelings of strangeness. During mystical experiences, the person undergoes ego dissolution. The mechanism responsible for this is altered activity in the default mode network. The DMN consists of, among other things, the lateral temporal cortex. Ramachandran suggests that the amygdala, an almond-shaped mass of gray matter, located in each temporal lobe attributes meaning to information by depending on emotional memory. My intent is neither to talk down to you, insult your intelligence, nor to um, make you feel like you have no idea what I'm talking about. If you would like me to do a show explaining these parts of the brain, please let me know in the comments. Well, friends, I think I've overloaded your neurons for one day. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like this content. Remember, you can catch me on Twitter. Please leave a comment below and Always remember to be curious and never be afraid.